Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Horn and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 as we're going to be starting a new series today with the Buy Blood Alone expansion. So we have not played Hoi 4 for, I think it's been over three months, so quite some time. We had a patron poll for which country we are going to play with for our first series back. And it was a very close vote with Greece winning my only one vote over Spain, which is the best Spain has ever done in our patron polls. But yeah, we have not done Greece on the channel yet. I have not even played Greece with their new expansion tree. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. I've looked at it a little bit before we started here so that we'd uh, kind of know which direction we're going and as well as which order we should be going through that focus tree. So we're going to go ahead and play with the uh, AI nation buffs. Ticked up by one. Now I typically do two for a major country. And when we play as a minor country like Greece is, we usually don't give the AI any bonuses. However, I think we're going to go ahead and give them one tick. That's, uh, again, something I don't typically do, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we're an incredibly weak country. Greece is probably, they might be the weakest country we've ever played on the channel. Because uh, I think they're, they're weaker than Portugal. Portugal starts out pretty weak, but I don't know, man. The Greeks have a, a lot of disadvantages and a lot of penalties. Uh, so... We're going to have them ticked up by one and, and we'll see how it goes. So all this here is going to be default, same with the gameplay rules and covert actions and all that kind of good stuff. So next we're going to take a look at the AI behavior. So the basic idea here is that we're going to try and set up every country with a few exceptions, uh, Germany being one of them, uh, the first one here. Uh, every country is going to be set up to try and build an empire. This is going to be an empire campaign. So the majority of the AI countries are going to be set to try and build up an empire, go down the route that is most likely to result in them trying to expand. Again, there's a few exceptions. Germany is one here. Uh, they're going to restore the Kaiser because if we have them go down their historical fascist route, which would be their best route for building an empire and expanding, if we have them go down that route, then we kind of already know how this campaign is going to go because uh, they'll end up allying with uh, the Italians, perhaps. There's a good chance they'll ally with the Italians, even with the, the route that they're currently going on their focus tree here. There's a chance they could still ally them, and they'll definitely ally the British. Uh, because the British are set to go fascist, and we've seen what happens whenever Germany and, and Britain are allied together. They quickly conquer everybody else. Uh, also, as a minor country, we've already uh, fought a German-British alliance before, uh, and that was as the Dutch, and we had an extreme amount of difficulty. In fact, that was the only campaign on the channel we've ever lost, was when we were playing a minor country, having to fight uh, the Germans and the British together. Uh, we also had to fight the Italians and the Spanish, I believe, in that campaign as well. I would like to see the factions be a little bit more equal in this campaign, have a couple uh, powerful factions, hopefully. We'll see how it ends up going. Another issue with having Germany uh, go down their typical fascist route is that we couldn't have Austria-Hungary, which I would like to have uh, the Hungarians go that route on their focus tree. Uh, but it's really difficult for them to do that because Germany annexes uh, Austria if you have them go the fascist route. So they're gonna be one of the few exceptions. We're gonna have them restore the Kaiser, which would result in them probably creating the central powers and having a, a pretty powerful alliance there. The central powers can be uh, tremendously powerful, uh, but uh, they won't be uh, in a situation where they're gonna ally with Britain, hopefully. We'll see how it ends up going, uh, but they probably won't ally with the, the British. Uh, so we got the Soviet Union going with the left opposition. That is because that's the permanent revolution route. I would assume that would be the best way for them to go if we want them to uh, try to expand, you know, communism uh, through warfare as well as through their their focus tree. Uh, Japan is going with their typical fascist route. That's the the best one for them uh, building their empire. The Italians are actually going to go with the Roman Empire route. Uh, that's a good one for building an empire, obviously, as you see in the name here and with the the focus tree, how many. Uh, claims and, and war goals they will get on other countries, but I also think it'd be interesting to have two countries, ourselves and the Italians, going to try and form the Roman Empire, because that's actually the route that we're going to be going on our focus tree as well. We're going to be attempting to restore the Byzantine Empire, which the Byzantine Empire is a creation by historians. That's not what they were called at the time by themselves or by other countries of the time. They were the Roman Empire. They were the Eastern Roman Empire. Uh, so I think it'd be interesting because uh, you could have two different situations. You could have a, a Western Roman Empire with Italy and then Eastern Roman Empire with us where we kind of coexist. So that would be an interesting historical flashback. Uh, another thing that could end up developing is that we could be competing for the claim to who's the, 
the new Roman Empire. Uh, so, you know, we could both be claiming that same imperial title and we go to war with each other. So there's two different ways that could develop. We'll just have to see what happens in the campaign. But yeah, I think it's interesting having them go the, the Roman Empire routes, but they could have went the fascist one as well because Italy expands with, with both of those. Uh, France, I think the, the House of Bonaparte, the monarchist route here would be the best one since they do get uh, quite a few war goals in that focus tree. Uh, they could also gone fascist, but I don't know... Uh, I don't know if they get as many war goals going fascist as they do with the, the House of Bonaparte. Uh, and also has some really interesting focuses. So we'll have France go that route. Uh, Poland, we're having them go fascist. However, we don't want them to go down the normal fascist route because then they'll become a puppet of Germany. And that's not how we want that to develop. So we're having them go with the Phalangist International, where they'll attempt to embrace Phalangism and stand against the Germans. The Australians, Canadians, South Africa, New Zealand and India, so all the Dominions, uh, the British Dominions are going to be going fascist. There's not really a lot of options for them, uh, but that's the one that's most likely uh, going to result in them expanding. Uh, you'll see a lot of fascists here uh, in this, uh, you know, in this game rules, simply because fascists are, are the ones that uh, get the most expansion uh, minded focuses. So the Hungarians are going to do the restore the, the Austria-Hungarian Empire, as we mentioned before. That means that they're going to be a direct rival to us in the Balkans, because we'll be attempting to expand in the Balkans, as will they. Uh, so that's going to be an uh, inevitable conflict, I think, uh, fighting with the Hungarians. The Romanians are going to do the Balkans dominance, so again, a rival for control of the Balkans here. Yugoslavia is going to go down their fascist route. Uh, Czechoslovakia is going to do democratic, and the reason we have them going this route is because if we have them go with the fascism, then they'll give some of their territory up to the Germans, and it'll look weird and create some weird situations. So it's best to have them go democratic because we actually want them to become part of the, the Austria-Hungarian Empire. Uh, Nationalist China is going to go with the alternative route because that does result in them attempting to attack the warlords. Uh, Communist China will go with the historical route. Manchukuo will go with the independence. They'll try and create uh, a Chinese empire. Uh, rebel against the Japanese, give the Japanese a little bit of challenge in the east as well, uh, since they'll probably dominate over there. Uh, the British are doing the organized the black shirts. I think that's the best route for having them attempting to expand. The United States going with the fascist route. Uh, the Dutch, I'm not sure which would have been the best choice here, guys. Because I think this one might result in them becoming a subject of Germany. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really looked at their focus tree in quite some time. So I'm just going with this in the hope that that's uh, the one most likely to have them expand, but I don't actually know that the Dutch have too many uh, directions for expansion. But again, it has been a while since I looked at their, their focus tree. Uh, the Mexicans, you can really have them go any route uh, because a lot of these result in them attempting to expand. Uh, the fascist dictatorship, they would definitely uh, attempt to push south and, and conquer uh, their neighbors. We know the theocratic order does that as well. Uh, you can see that just from the text here. Uh, but the reason why I went with the Soviet Republic is simply because we have a lot of fascists. And this will also result in them attempting to, uh, you know, expand their borders. As you can see here, uh, they will be spreading the revolution into Latin America at the tip of a bayonet. Uh, so you could have really went with any route here, but just because we have so many fascists, I decided to have Mexico go with the Soviet Republic. Spain's going to go with phalangism. They're going to reject Carlism and seek to restore Spanish imperialism. So hopefully that will result in them uh, attempting to expand their borders, though I have never seen the AI actually succeed in going down this route. Typically they always lose the civil war. Uh, so we'll see what happens. More than likely it'll probably be a different Spain. Uh, but if they do go this route, if they're able to succeed in the civil war, uh, then I wonder if they would ally with Poland. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so Portugal is going to go with the Fifth Empire, another country that typically fails going down this route. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that's the best one for them attempting to expand. Uh, Bulgaria is going to do return of Ferdinand I. Turkey is going to do restore the Ottoman Sultanate. Of course, that does give them a, a lot of claims, uh, allows them to expand their borders quite a bit. If they can succeed, uh, AI sometimes has difficulty with this one. And there's a the fact that we would likely attack Turkey, so it depends on how quickly they're able to do it. They might not even be able to get it done in time. Uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia all going fascist. Ethiopia is going with the imperial route and Switzerland's going with the Imperial route as well. Uh, the rest of the game setup is set up on default. So yeah, we are good to go. We're gonna play on the regular difficulty. We were already added a bit of difficulty in here by having the major nation bus for the AI. And uh, let's go ahead and jump on into the campaign. 
So we'll take a look at Greece's starting situation. Again, they're they're pretty weak, guys. So just looking at their national spirits, they have one for George II that is currently reducing our stability by 5% and increasing daily support for unaligned. The debt to the IFC, another uh, negative one here. They're taking away quite a few of our civilian factories and also reducing our stability. Uh, we have the foreign monopolies taking even more of our civilian factories and making it more expensive for us to change up some of our laws. We also have a national spirit here that's giving us some consumer goods factories back, so that's helping a little bit, but also forcing more resources into the market. Uh, we can construct civilian factories faster, so that's nice. But again, this one also is increasing the cost to change the economy and trade laws. So we won't be able to change those anytime soon unless we want to spend a bunch of political power. Uh, then we have political instability, uh, that is reducing our political power. Uh, looks like this also uh, has maybe some effects here on uh, one of the unique mechanics for Greece, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then we have the agrarian society, uh, reducing our recruitable population and our factory output. And those are massive penalties. So yeah, the uh, Greeks are in a horrible situation here. Didn't want to go ahead and show our unique mechanics here. So first is a 1936 election, which will fire in 25 days. Uh, with the route that we want to go on our focus tree, we do have to place the king under house arrest. Uh, we want to do that now. That's going to further reduce our stability. It does not have any political power costs because you need to fire it almost immediately here. You only have a few days to do it. So go ahead and do it now so I don't forget. And this is their unique faction management mechanic. There's the monarchists, the republicans, the communists, and the fascists. And then they have uh, these different attitudes towards you. Loyal, friendly, hostile, or inconsequential. And that's what they just don't give any bonuses or penalties. And uh, this affects the stability and manpower bonuses that they grant. Currently, only the monarchists are loyal to us. And so we get that 10% stability and the 20% manpower. While the Republicans and Communists are disloyal, further increasing our stability. Uh, that's one reason why our stability is so low right now. And there are some decisions to affect uh, affect these values here, befriending or crushing them, which do seem like they cost a lot of political power here. I don't know if they'll be necessary or not. We'll have to wait and see. And there's a few other unique decisions here as well that we'll take a look at in the future. So as you guys can see, Greece is incredibly weak at start. They're already a minor country with not a lot to offer initially, but then they also have all these penalties. It's uh, significant, guys, so we need to get rid of most of those through the focus tree. I guess we'll go ahead and do that first. Go ahead and get a focus selected. Uh, so these are the two political routes. We're going with the bring home the exiled Republicans. And then I'll allow you to go two different routes, either compromise with the monarchist, which is the way we want to go, in order to form the Byzantine Empire. So yeah, we're going to go down that route, but the other option would be to go with the communist route here. And then there's the king's government one. And that's for all these focuses. But yeah, we're going to go with this one, and we will not be able to do it until after the 1936 election here in about a month. So the first one to work on would probably be this one here, devaluing the drachma. Because it's 35 days. It's going to give you 120 political power, and then unlocks decisions to manage the debt to the IFC. Uh, so we can, we can try and get rid of that national spirit we have. So I think that's the best option for the start. The other option, the Hellenic Armed Forces would take 70 days to get, and it grants us 30 uh, experience for all branches, and then also unlocks the Hellenic Academy battle plan decisions. And then you have the three different routes, Air Force, Army, and the Navy to go through. Uh, but yeah, this is our domestic focus ones. Lots of little choices to make here as well. So it's interesting. So let's go and start with the devaluing the drachma since that's the only real choice I feel, unless you want to get that uh, that experience, so that would be helpful as well. We only have the three research slots right now, so very limited. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that we're getting the stuff we absolutely have to get, like the electric uh, electronic mechanical engineering here, and then the industrial techs, basic machine tools, and the construction one. Anything to kind of help us out on rebuilding our, our domestic economic situation here. Uh, let's go and get all of our troops put into an army. Uh, I might go and get rid of this cab unit. Yeah, I think we're gonna get rid of the cab unit. 
Although we could keep them around, considering the fact that we won't have tanks anytime soon. I guess we'll keep them for now. Yeah, there's no real problem with having them for just a little bit here. And we're going to go ahead and let these guys train only up to uh, the next experience level. I don't think we're going to train them any further because we're going to have serious problems with equipment. Uh, so army experience is not needed enough uh, for us to, to warrant really training those troops right now. We'll just have to wait. You guys will see just how bad the situation is soon. Uh, we'll go and move these guys over to like uh, borders. Not that we'll be going to war anytime soon or anything, but yeah, we'll, we'll go and move them over to some locations just in case. Uh, so maybe take these guys, have them come over here, protect that port, and then they come over this way. Move them over here, and that's probably good. Yeah, not going to war anytime soon, but we'll put them on the front. All right, so let's go ahead and get some stuff constructing. I think we have just a couple factories to actually make use of, so we should probably build more civilian factories. Right now we have a total of seven, and I believe we're only going to be able to use a couple of these. Uh, so let's go ahead and build them. I mean, it's 40% everywhere, so it doesn't really matter where we build these. So we'll just build two civilian factories for now. That's going to take forever uh, for us to do it. Uh, with our military factories, we, again, only have two. Uh, so right now we're getting infantry equipment and artillery. Could, instead of artillery, get the support equipment. Uh, but let's just go ahead and set this up to have the support equipment build with the first military factory that we get, whenever that is. And then we have two dockyards that we can make use of as well. I feel like the only real choice is submarines right now. There's not really anything else I can see getting. And also we don't have any Navy experience to to make any adjustments. Uh, so like here, we'd want to get the new engines and the no, new uh, torpedo tubes. So we'll just build one of these, just so we're making use of the dockyards. But obviously this is not uh, the best model we could be building. So let's go ahead and have the, the ships go out and train, though we might have some problems with fuel. Do we have any planes right now? Looks like we have a few right here. Uh, we won't train them yet, because we're going to focus on the fleet first, so we can get a little bit of naval experience. So yeah, let's go ahead and train up both of these. I don't know how well this is going to end up working out due to our lack of fuel. And I think that's all we needed to do here. Can reorganize the railway system. That's something we're not going to want to do until we're ready to build some supply hubs. Let's say we don't need to be notified of that. And I think that's it. I think we're good to go. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and unpause it. Put it on speed five, which is going to be the majority of this uh, episode here. It's just sitting on speed five, trying to make some progress, get some text research, get some focuses done, get through the focus tree, get rid of some of these penalties. There will not be any war in this episode. We're just going to try and make as, as much progress as possible. The Venezuelists win the election. So the Greek people filled the streets of Greece today, celebrating the choice of the army to ensure the monarchists could not interfere with the election results. The Venezuelists have been delivered a powerful mandate to govern, returning from their exile abroad. But they face an uphill battle uniting a very divided country, and a country that has not forgotten the disastrous war that they pulled the whole country into in 1919. There also remains the question of what the, the Venezuelists will do with the captured Greek monarch regardless of what happens interesting times lay ahead for greece at last we have returned uh, so the monarchists are going to become indifferent so they no longer support us but the communists will also become indifferent so they no longer oppose us uh, and then we'll have our politics changed as well with a different really par ruling party taking over and then public elections will be held every five years all right so uh, we now have a new leader and that grants us daily political power gain, stability, war support, and a reduction of political advisor costs. So pretty helpful, and our stability is now higher. So we're getting those bonuses. Uh, we still have the George II penalty here. And then the other thing to consider is that our fashion management has changed. So the Republicans are now loyal, and uh, we're getting that 10% stability bonus and manpower bonus from them, without getting the penalty from anybody being uh, disloyal to us, uh, hostile to us. So we're in a better situation overall than we were when we started. So with that event done, we can now go the other route on our focus tree as soon as we knock out this focus here. And Italy moves to annex the Sultanate of Ossa. So yeah, that's over here in Ethiopia. 
But yeah, we saw those focuses when we played as Italy. And, uh, or I guess events, not focuses. And now we need to get our next focus selected, which is to bring home the exiled Republicans. This is going to get us 120 political power, a change in both democracy and communism. Uh, Venezuela's ministers and generals will return from exile and become available to us. Uh, the Romanians will cancel their uh, guarantee for our independence. And we're going to get a penalty to the relations with Romania, Yugoslavia, and Turkey because we'll lose the, the Balkan Pact with them. All right, so we also can now modify our government. I don't think there's anything for us to get here, guys. With our political advisors, this character here, the Resolute Social Democrat, would be helpful for the political power gain, the extra stability. But I think we're going to be going fascist, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's uh, the route on the focus tree. Again, I'm not super familiar with the uh, Greek focus tree. just kind of looked at it a little bit. But that might not be the way we want to go. And there's, there's better options for political power as well. So I think we're going to have to wait to actually spend this because, yeah, there's no choices here. Uh, a lot of the design choices are shut down to us for now. I suppose we could go with one of these two. But we're not even researching tanks, nor will we do so anytime soon, so not the best use of our political power. The material designer. I know who I want to go with here, and that is Pycrol? Pycrol? Not sure how to pronounce that. But we can't do that until we get the crackdown on foreign monopolies. This gives you a 15% research bonus for weapons and equipment rather than just the 10% bonus you get here. And also you get a 5% infantry division attack bonus. So I think that's the best route for us. So we have to get that focus first. And the theorist, we want to get the grand battle plan expert. That will be the route we go. I think it just fits the, the most for Greece and our, our situation. And we can also get the best... Uh, Doctrine cost reduction. It's much better to get the 15% than the, the generic 10%. Also, that requires that the monarchists are friendly or loyal. And there's no other real choices here. Because remember, we can't change up our economic laws, trade laws, or anything like that because of how expensive they are. It costs like 200 something. Uh, we did get the 150 political power, so maybe something new has opened up here. A new character. We'll just take a look. Yeah, I don't really care about the ship designer right now or aircraft designer. I mean, you, you can get it, but uh, we're not going to be researching any of that anytime soon. So again, I just think it's kind of a waste of the political power. I think we should just save our political power. And as long as it doesn't uh, get too high and start stacking up, uh, you know, where you can't where you start losing the political power, you get to the maximum. As long as we don't get to that position, I think we'll be fine. Uh, we could also use it here with our faction management or managing the debt to the IFC. So these would be choices as well. Uh, so we could do small debt repayments to the British, the French, and the Italians. And what this does is reduces even further the amount of civilian factories we'll have access to. Also results in us getting less of our resources. And then we'll, we'll have this for 60 days. And it'll help the British and it will clear one quarter of the current debt. So basically you got to do each of these four times. And you can see here that we have 100% of the debt. I'm not entirely sure if we'll get any focuses that will help us with this. We might want to take a look before we spend anything here. Uh, we could also attempt to crush or befriend, befriend the, the monarchists, but I want to say in the focus tree we're already going to get something that's going to help us there. Because yeah, we have that compromise with the monarchists, so that's going to make the monarchists friendly. So I don't need to do any of those decisions with them right now. And then there's also focuses here dealing with the debt. And yeah, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to pay them back or or how we're going to do it. So let's just keep our, our political power, guys. Yeah, I think we're just going to hold on to it for now. I suppose you could get the theorist, but yeah, we don't have any army experience or anything like that. Uh, Turkey re-militarizes the Turkish Straits, so you might have noticed that the these two states here had the, the red border around them. So those were demilitarized zones, and the, the Turks could not put troops in either of those, but now they can. Uh, Germany's having its civil war. We could try and provide you know a division or two into the civil wars that are going to be happening, might want to say we don't want to be uh, notified about any of this. But yeah, we could we could do that. However, our troops are incredibly weak. They don't have any equipment. So I don't think it's really worth it. 
Uh, improving worker conditions, another thing I don't think we're going to need to do right now. We'll have to see where our stability is sitting at. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do any of these guys. We're just going to hold on to the political power. For once we have access to uh, more options here, basically as soon as we get that one focus, we'll get access to all the monarchist. So we can start putting them into place because some of them are, are pretty good. Uh, we got the electronic mechanical engineering. So let's go ahead and get the mechanical computing next. We need as many research bonuses as we can get since we only have those three research slots. Uh, we finished up the bringing home of the exiled Republicans, granting more political power, and also the democratic and communism change there, and then those opinion changes. And I think we're going to go ahead and just continue down that route so we can get the, the monarchist friendly, get more stability, and George II will relinquish his stranglehold on the country and become a constitutional monarch. That's a 35-day focus as well, so we can get it quicker. That's probably the only, yeah, this is only a 35-day focus until we get down to the Athenian thinkers. As far as our research bonuses, I know that there's one somewhere in here that you can get. And it's not that one. Might need to have this selected here. Ethiopia has capitulated already. So here are the two from going these two different routes. So the route we're going, we got to get all the way down here to the Dias cast. It's going to take a while. Uh, same thing if you had went with the, the King's government. It's pretty far down to get that research slot. And then there's also one over here, which is pretty far down. So we have some research bonuses, but to get the, the fourth and fifth slots, it's not going to be any time soon, guys. It's going to take us a long time if we're going to be able to, to actually get those. Uh, so now that we've gotten that, we'll, we'll get another one selected, and then we'll, we'll take a look at our advisors now to see if we have any other better options available here. Uh, so this is going to add the Martyrs of the Anatolian Catastrophe which is going to grant us more recruitable population, which would be super helpful. We don't have any manpower at the moment. Just can't build any units. Also going to grant us some more war support, which is currently incredibly low here. But the stirring emotions over Anatolia could have un unintended consequences. So could get that one. Let me just see if there's anything that's going to help us right away here. Because we do need to start getting rid of some of those penalties, guys. And this one does say it's going to have unintended consequences. I don't know what those are going to be. So it might be better at this point to wait to go down here and, and start getting rid of some of these problems that we have. Domestically. Yeah, I think we really should. So yeah, let's go ahead and work on uh, this, this branch here where we have three different options. So this one on the, the far left here is separate from these two. Get us a synthetic refinery and also a bunch of other resources. So helpful for resources. We don't have any factories though, so we don't really need resources at the moment. I guess some of those might get traded away, and then you'll get more civilian factories from that. But yeah, that'll lead you down to here. It's probably not the priority. We really should go down this branch here, where there's a choice. We can either utilize our strengths and then focus on our farmer-focused culture, our agrarian society here. And that'll get rid of that uh, natural spirit, the agrarian society, and replace it with farmer focus. Uh, basically, it's going to get rid of most of the penalties, I believe, with the exception of the full recruitable population factor. I think it's a 45% penalty. This is going to replace 30% of that, so it'll still be a 15% penalty. It will also get rid of that 30% factory output, so that'll be helpful, and uh, gives us some other bonuses. But if you go with the forge the farmers into factories, then this is going to get rid of much more of those penalties, so the recruitable population factor would be reduced by 38%, so you'd only have a 7% penalty now. And the factory output is actually going to give you a 5% bonus. However, you're going to lose stability. Uh, so that stability is going to take away some of that factory output bonus that you're getting. And then also give you other penalties. And you're not getting any of those bonuses there. But it does give you access to the paying back our debts in bulk. And then you can do the large debt repayment to the British, French, and Italians. So you can pay it off faster, I suppose. Also increases your stability. And that gives you access to these focuses here. What I'm thinking is that we're going to go with this route, guys. Because yeah, I look through these, and it just seems like the, the better route overall. Well, this seems like it might be really helpful. 
These ones are pretty close. There's not huge differences here. This is going to switch you over to free trade. Well, this one's going to switch you over to limited exports. You can always change those, though, uh, by using political power. Really, the key difference here is this is going to give stability. This is going to give political power. They all give you access to these, so no real difference there. So the main thing you need to consider is these lines here, uh, this route and this route. Again, this one's nice. Uh, political power is nice. Uh, you know, we get back some of our civilian factories, more political power, and then we'll get off-map civilian factories for every country in the Western and Eastern and Northern Balkans that has a high friendly opinion of us. That includes Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Turkey. I think we'd have to like spend time increasing opinion and that could get you a lot of civilian factories. There's a lot of countries. If you compare that with this route over here, you're going to get a military and civilian factory for every one of these four countries, France, the UK, Germany, and the Soviet Union that has opinion greater than 80. So you're not just getting civilian factories, you're also getting military factories. You're going to get one of each. But there's only four countries compared to the very large number of countries that are here. But of course, you've got to get the high opinion. It's easier to get high opinion with four countries than it is to get it with, you know, who knows how many countries there are here. If you wanted to take advantage of it, you'd want to tick everybody's opinion up. So that would take some time. So, I mean, honestly, between the two of these, when, I mean, they're pretty equal in a sense. It really just depends on how you look at it. But looking at the, the following ones, you have more stability here, more infrastructure. So, yeah, not that different than what you're getting over here. But this gives a, a research speed bonus and a political power gain. So that one's better than anything else you're getting over here, frankly. And then you have these two choices, cooperate with the foreign monopolies. That gets rid of the majority of the penalties that the foreign monopolies has. And it's, it's mostly bonuses here. While the crackdown on foreign monopolies gets you stability and then just completely removes the foreign monopolies. So you're not going to have any of those penalties, but you don't get any of these bonuses either. And so it just seems like this route is the better one. Like you're just going to get more out of it. Now you're going to have a, still have a recruitable population factor penalty. Uh, so that's something to consider. For the most part, it just seems like you're getting more out of it with the research bonuses and the bonuses here and the bonuses here compared to just the 5% factory output there. And then this one, which might be really good. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we're going to go this route, guys. Uh, so I think we'll want to start with the utilize our shrinks because we need to get rid of some of these penalties. That agrarian society one is a, a massive penalty, particularly with the, the factory output. Uh, we got the basic machine tools. We're going to go with the concentrated industry one. Need to get some uh, output bonuses. Oh, yes, we can also take a look at our advisors now to see who's all available. So we're going to want to get the devoted corporatist. That's going to get us more political power and factory output. Pretty useful. It's also not that expensive either. As far as our other choices, a war industrialist would be good once we start building military factories. I suppose we could just get him now, since we don't have enough things to get to spend all the political power. So yeah, we're going to get him now. And then we'll also want to get the chief of army. Uh, we have a genius army maneuver bonus here, so that's going to increase division speed. Most importantly, it's going to start getting us some army experience, which we uh, very much need. And it's the, the best option. He's clearly the best option here. And that's with the Republicans. So we might end up losing him. We also don't have the political power. We need a little bit more. Yeah, we might end up losing him. And the Republicans are not only are friendly or loyal. I'm not sure if they'll take him from us. Something to consider, though. Uh, so we've finished up that submarine. And we do have the Navy experience. Let me just take a look and see where our ships are at here. On the training. So yeah, we definitely want to take these guys out. So we don't have them training any longer. Save us some fuel, which we have none of right now. But yeah, we only want them to train until they get to the next experience level. Let's go and throw this submarine into that task force. And then we can now use that experience to improve our submarines. Give them the new engines and the new torpedo tubes. So get both of those. This will be the historical submarines here. And we'll probably just call them something simple like uh, attack subs. Nothing too complicated here. And this is level two, right? All right, excellent. So we're gonna save that. Uh, we'll keep everything else as is. And then we're gonna get these guys built in. We can just set them to build indefinitely. That's all we're gonna be working on for some time. 
is just the submarines. I don't really think there's gonna be any use on getting the other ships for now. And we could use a nice sized submarine fleet, particularly to uh, try and defend against invasions. I think that'd be helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this Army Maneuver Commander because he is gonna give us the best bonus for experience. And yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know if we'll get him removed from us, but I mean, he's the only genius here. And we know we're not gonna have the communists in power, so yeah, we're not gonna wanna go with the other expert here. Army defense, I suppose, would be helpful, but uh, it'd be better to have the division attack when the, the fascists are friendly, but we wanna get some army experience. So let's go and go with him. If we lose him, we lose him. As a minor country, political power typically isn't a massive issue. It's like other, uh, other things that are problems, like manpower, for instance. Yeah, we don't have a lot of things to devote our political power to, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, let's go with the excavation next. And as you guys can see, like there's not a lot that we can do right now with our political power because we're kind of kind of limited at the moment. So the civil war in Spain has kicked up. Again, I do not expect this to go the way we set them to because I've never seen it work out. Uh, just monarchists in general seem to have trouble in the Spanish civil war for the AI, anyways. Uh, we got our utilize our strength national focus. So we can go and get this one, but obviously it wouldn't grant us any bonuses because our opinion with all of them are really low. So that's something we could use our opinion, or excuse me, our, our political power for, is to increase opinion with all of them. Though, that would take some time and it also requires some really good timing here. So for now, let's go and get a different focus. Obviously we still gotta work on that. I think we're gonna do the Hellenic Armed Forces next. Go ahead and get those, uh, you know, the experience and then get those decisions opened up. Not entirely sure what those are. So we'll see what that's all about. And I suppose we could start working on it, uh, improving relations. You know, that's gonna require some of our political power right now. We're gaining 1.51, so we could do all four of them at the same time. So let's go and do that, guys. I, I don't think there's any, any focuses that are gonna grant us opinion. Though, one thing we could consider looking at, let me see, does this bo boost any opinion? It, it might. No, it doesn't, unfortunately. Are we getting any penalty because of the money we owe them? Looks like that's a no as well. We're just getting the, the penalty from the, the different ideology. The Italians also have the negative 10 because of the claims on the territory, which are those islands they have over here in the Aegean. So yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any focuses. So if there's no focuses that are gonna boost it, then we could just start working on it. Yeah, we don't wanna do those yet. Can't do those yet. I don't think there's anything in here either. So yeah, we can start working on it. Why not? We'll go ahead and do it with all four of them. So we just, we can try and get that done. So we'll do France, Britain, Italy, which will take the longest. And then Germany, uh, well, hmm, yeah, I guess we'll undo them. But yeah, it's gonna be difficult to keep it balanced where uh, we can get all of them up above 80 and keep them at 80 in time to get that focus completed. But man, it would be helpful to get uh, four civilian factories and four military factories with the current number that we have. I mean, you see how big of an impact that would make. We have two military factories available to us right now. So it's, it'd be really, really helpful. So I'd like to get it done. We'll see what we can do there, guys. Uh, we do need to keep our fleet out of training if they don't need it. Uh, now given, I think we set those guys to only train if they need need to. But yeah, just get them all moved out of there so we know what we're currently training. Because once we're done with the fleet, we want to go ahead and get, I guess we could just take these guys out here. Yeah, once we're done with the fleet, We'll start working on our, our planes. And you see we are building up the fuel just a little bit here. So we'll let them train up. And it looks like they're repairing currently. And just about done over here as well. Last destroyer needs to be trained. Poland seizes Danzig. Otto assumes a Hungarian crown. We got our own national focus completed, and there is a civil war in Estonia. All right, so I got us some, some experience. 
So maybe we'll take a look at, at spending that. There's a few things I can see us doing there. And I think we're going to be going back. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go and go back. Uh, it would be useful getting those donk yards, I suppose. Are these 35 day focuses? They are. I suppose you could make an argument to go ahead and grab all three of these real quick, just because they're only 35 days. I suppose this one's not that helpful. But yeah, I can see grabbing all three of these real quick. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that, guys. Uh, so we'll start with the, the Hellenic Navy. Yeah, we'll start there. And then we'll get the, the other two. Get those knocked out. And what was the focus we just got? That's right, we got the army experience and those decisions. So I wanted to take a look at the, the decisions available to us here. Do we have like a certain amount of time to pay this off? So I'm not seeing any time limit here. But it is interesting, it says you can simply allow the world to unravel as time progresses and more drastic course of action may very well present themselves. Remember, we are taking a, a penalty here for as long as we we have this stability and, and we're losing access to a lot of our civilian factories. So there's a reason, I suppose, to, to pay for this. But, but man, it's it's a, a lot of little power. If you got to do each of these, it's 100, it's 300 total. But yeah, I mean, I guess we could do it to get rid of those penalties. I'm just wondering if there's any way we can get rid of it without having to, to spend the, the political power. So the Republicans are currently loyal while the monarchists are friendly and the communists are, are hostile. So they're kind of offsetting each other with stability, but we are getting some manpower bonuses, and that's the reason why we do have access to some manpower now, which is gonna be all needed for those submarines we're building, because yeah, there's there's not a lot of manpower. So here's those Hellenic Academy battle plans. So basically it just gives you attack and defense bonuses against those countries. Uh, there's a lot of other countries that have similar situation. The United States has one, for instance, and uh, in their focus tree. So this could be really useful, uh, particularly when we want to invade Bulgaria, which as of right now, of course, we can't do. Not, uh, you don't have access to that because we're democratic currently. So not much we can do as far as warfare goes. We just got to kind of play things out and uh, get through our focus tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to do all three of these. And then we're going to come back to this branch over here. Unless... We have the uh, opinions up enough where we can get the open foreign subsidized factories. We'll just kind of keep our eye on that. And, and that's one of the benefits of doing these 35-day focuses as well. Because you can see we've already gotten the opinion up with both UK and France. And Germany. Germany tied enough as well. It's just the Italians. So we should go ahead and get that now. Uh, we should be done. It's a 70-day one. We're just going to keep our eye on it. And make sure that we have the opinion of all four of them. Uh, up uh, up to 80 All right, right around when we get this finished up here so again it requires a little bit of delicate timing there now we did knock out two of our techs and we are not in 1937 yet but we could work on the 1937 techs I suppose because we are close enough we could also go ahead and get the radio yeah I guess we'll get the radio over here I, I suppose we would have wanted to do that with uh, one of these tech slots anyways. I suppose rather than researching ahead of time, we could go ahead and hit the trucks, because we're definitely gonna need field hospitals. Manpower is gonna be a massive issue for us, as it typically is for most minor countries, with a few exceptions, like the really big minor countries. And uh, we now have access to more dockyards, since we just got that uh, tech, or excuse me, that uh, focus done. And so we'll be able to build our submarines faster. But yeah, I just, I don't know that we'll wanna get anything else other than submarines for right now. Because remember, there's the manpower situation. There's We don't have a lot of Navy experience. In fact, what we want to do is, is spend that experience now. Uh, it looks like the German Reich was annexed. And so they are going to be probably going down the return of the Kaiser route. It's got to be one of the, the easier civil wars. Because I don't think I've ever seen the AI lose uh, that one. Well, they'll, they'll lose a lot of the other ones and mess up your, your plans. Yeah, let's go in and, and uh, get ourselves some bonuses over here since we have this excess army and naval experience. I think we'd want to start with the professional officer corps. We might want to switch over to like elevated engineering corps or something else uh, a bit later. Uh, but getting that land doctrine cost so we can try and get through the land doctrine tree would be really helpful. So yeah, I think we'll get the professional army corps first. And we still have a bit of experience. 
So go ahead and could go ahead and get something else, but all these would be bonuses for warfare. Which we don't really need at this moment. So we don't have to make a choice here right now. Same thing over here. I don't think we really need to get anything. Instead, let's start getting through that doctrine tree. I don't think we have any penalties to army doctrines. Yeah, there's no penalties. So there's no reason we can't start moving through there. So what we'd want to do is go ahead and get our grand battle plan expert now. And uh, start moving through the, the army doctrine tree. So we're going to do that. We can also go ahead and spend our naval experience. And... I mean, we could go ahead and get a, a research bonus. That's typically what I'll go for here. Is get the naval research speed with the ship modules research speed. And I suppose that's what we should do. Anything to kind of help us out with research, since we're going to have issues with that. And yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything here right now. I think we're fine. Just want to spend some of that, some of that experience, particularly the army experience. So the German Civil War has ended. It looks like we should be able to make it through our first year here. That's usually my my bare minimum goal, unless I have like a civil war or something, is is to get through the the first year in the the first episode. And we should get a bit further. Uh, so we got the excavation one, excellent, and we are in 1937. So let's go ahead and start getting the 1937 text, starting with the concentrated industry two. Let's go ahead and knock that out. After we get radio. I don't think we're going to get the radio detection. We'll move on to something else, or go go to the industrial tax. All right, so we got uh, the open foreign subsidies factories. Uh, I don't... Damn, I did not take a look at that, so I don't know how we we're looking on opinion. Let me just take a look here. Uh, looks like we didn't get it from Italy. Damn, that's a shame. Well, we got it from three. I just completely forgot we were doing that. So we got it from the three... So that means we should have gotten six military factories, or excuse me, three military factories and three civilian factories, which, yeah, you can see that's exactly what we got. We're now at five military factories, and, uh, hmm, I thought we had ten civilians, but maybe we were getting one from trade or something, because uh, yeah, we only have twelve now. All right, so we're now investing four into building that one civilian factory. We're almost done, and uh, most importantly, we now have some military factories to invest, uh, because we need... Well, we need infantry equipment. We can start building the support equipment now. We've already built up some of the the artillery guns there. And I suppose we could start getting like uh, air techs as well so we can start building some aircraft. But right now, let's just go ahead and take care of our, our shortages here. Uh, we can get the next land doctrine. So let's go ahead and get that. Uh, so we, we're already in the grand battle plan doctrine and that's the one we're gonna stay in. And I think it's just the best fit for the Greeks and their, their terrain and their current situation. Uh, so this one here is going to get us more max planning and daily command power. It only costs us 80. Not bad. Alright, so we said we were going to continue getting these here. And this would get us some research bonuses for the land doctrines. So yeah, we'll go ahead and continue those before we move over to this one. So we'll do the Hellenic Army first and then the Hellenic Air Force again. Just because these are only 35 day focuses. So you can get them nice, nice and quick. So we'll get that one, and that'll help us get through that doctrine tree for a little bit cheaper. Especially because we're not training up our, our troops right now, so the only experience gain we're getting is from our, our genius uh, army commander. Let me make sure we're not boosting. We shouldn't be boosting anymore. Yeah, we're not. I just want to make sure we're not boosting any other countries with the opinion, since we don't need that anymore. It's a bummer that I wasn't paying attention and we missed the Italians there. Because we could have boosted them up and got those, those extra two. So that's kind of a shame. So one more focus to get over here for the military before we change directions. Uh, we can now also get that army doctrine with that 50% research bonus. So this is only going to cost us 30 army experience and get us some defense and organization for our infantry. Because yeah, we uh, are going to need as many bonuses for our troops as possible. See, I really wanted to get through that Doctrine Tree a little bit faster than I'll often do. A lot of times it'll take me a while to get through the, the Army Doctrine Tree, because I'll spend the Army experience typically on designing our divisions. Uh, we're not doing that now, of course, because we don't have any equipment or manpower, so... It's probably not the best way to do it. Instead, I think it's better to, to go down the, the tree. The Doctrine Tree. Black shirts are organizing in the United Kingdom. We got the Hellenic Air Force. Excellent. So again, we are now done here for a little while. Uh, we could also continue down this way 
get you some infrastructure and stability. Most importantly, allow you to get down here to get that research bonus, which would be nice. Don't really want to switch to free trade, so we'll have to switch out of that. That'll cost a little power, but yeah, those are important for getting these bonuses here, which are pretty useful. And getting rid of that four monopolies one as well. Although I guess in order to do those one, uh, yeah, some of these ones I wanted to do here, we actually needed to crack down, didn't we? Yeah, we had to do the crack down on four monopolies, which I decided not to go that route. So we won't be able to get those. And that's okay. Uh, I, I do think that these were the, the better ones, which is why I had selected them. But yeah, we, we didn't go that route, so we'll have to pick different focuses. I think this one's also, yeah, requires the crackdown on four monopolies. So we will be a little bit more limited since I did go that route. But again, I just feel like with the bonuses you're getting here, this was the better route. But I didn't even consider the fact that this one here, the crackdown on four monopolies, was on this side. I actually didn't realize that it was on that side. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we'll be able to go that route, and we'll be a little bit more limited here. We'll be able to get some of the, what I would say is some of the best ones available, but there's still some pretty good choices here, guys. Yeah, like with the tank one, we'll be fine. The air one, no effect there for me not going that route. Yeah, no effect here with the, the naval as well. I think it's just the material designer. Yeah, this tank one is the one I would have went with as well, the mobile tank. Not that we'll be using a lot of tanks in this one. And then over here, I mean, some of these require they cooperate with four monopolies. And these aren't bad at all. This gives you a factory output. That's fantastic. So there's still some good choices in the industrial concern as well with the route that I, I went with. We just lost access to these two here, it seems. Which, uh, I like this one. This one's pretty good. Yeah, we got some decent choices available in the industrial concern. Honestly, Greece has some, some great uh, choices here. Now, is there anything we want to get right now since we do have the political power? I'm not seeing anything here with the political advisors. We could go ahead and get something for uh, some more experience, though. The material designer, I suppose we since we're not getting the crackdown, we could go ahead and get that. Because, yeah, none of these require any other focus that we'll be getting. So I suppose we'd want to do the infantry equipment designer, only get the 10% bonus. Yeah, just not as good as what this one was. That's, this is probably the biggest loss here, is not being able to get that. So we're going to work with the British. Though again, we might lose that. I'm not sure if we'll, we'll lose that or not if we go to war with the British. I don't have any plans on going to war with the British anytime soon. As far as conflicts go, uh, we obviously want to conquer the Balkans, so Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Romania are very much enemies, as is Albania. Of course, if we don't attack them soon, then that'll be under Italian hands. Uh, but there's not really much I can do about it right now since we can't declare war yet. If we could, if we already fascist, I would, I would declare war, which is why we probably need to hurry up and get over to that other focus. Uh, did I not select a focus? Oh, my bad, guys. We're wasting time. Uh, we need to get there remembering the Anatolian catastrophe. Now, given we didn't waste that uh, that uh, not getting it because it went into our political power, but yeah, we wanted to be working on a focus there. So that was my bad. Got distracted. I would get the radios here. So we're done here until 1938. So let's go ahead and do the industrial tax, guys. We'll get the construction two next. And uh, we'll soon have those trunks ready and then we'll start uh, building those. Uh, we have some submarines that need to be trained, so let's go ahead and set them up to train up just until they're done. Keep our train our, uh, submarines at the highest training level. And I suppose we can go ahead and train up our, our planes as well. And this is all we have, so yeah, we'll just train them up. And that'll deplete our our uh, oil here and our fuel in 60-something in days, a couple months. Austria votes to unite with the Hungarians. So that has been effective. Uh, also, we can now get another army doctrine, the Grand Assault. That's a breakthrough and soft attack for our army. And we're going to train these guys up since they did get some of that manpower. Estonia has been annexed. Remember that was a civil war that happened up there? And we got our trucks. Alright, excellent. Um, so let's go ahead and do... I think we're going to do the, the field hospitals now. It's pretty important for any minor country to get those. 
because you need just all the manpower that you can possibly get. And then we'll want to also go ahead and set up the, the trucks to, to start building. And we'll want to take a, a factory from the infantry equipment. We are lacking resources, uh, so we need to we're gonna need to trade for the steel at the very least. The rubber's fine, uh, but let's go ahead and trade with. I'm not entirely sure who's most likely to be an enemy and a friend. Again, we'll, we'll be expanding up this way, and we'll most certainly go to war with Turkey. So maybe trade with the Soviet Union. Yeah, we'll trade with the Soviets. We'll have to give two civilian factories away, which we don't have many civilian factories, so that leaves us with two for construction. Uh, Carlos Spain has risen up, so the Spanish Civil War looks like an absolute mess over here right now. Yeah, it's kind of a mess over there. Uh, we do have political power that we could spend. So I was talking about getting the, uh, the plain text. We could also... Go ahead and get the Chief of Air Force and Navy just for the experience gain. And there's not really many options over here. I suppose we'd want to go with the Decisive Battle. That does require Monarchists are friendly or loyal. I suppose we'd want to do the, the Air Force one first. And it's really just a choice between Air, Experience, Gain, uh, where you're getting both of those bonuses, the Daily and the Percentage bonus, or... Uh, just getting the daily bonus and air accidents chance is uh, reduced. I think we'll do the air reformer. Yeah, I think air experience is a little bit more important right now. So we'll get that. And then uh, we'll get the chief of navy as soon as we have the political power. And what I wanted to do here was go ahead and get that bonus for the research. So that would be helpful. And then I think we need the 50 experience to get this last one. Let's probably get that knocked out before we start working on the, the air doctrines. All right, so we'll have to play for a little bit longer. I'm going to finish this up and see what happens, because I'm curious what these consequences are going to be. So I'm going to knock that out. So now we have three choices on what we want to go with next. These ones don't lead anywhere. Uh, this is just uh, increase of democratic support. Requires that you have the really hardy democratic. It's going to modify the political instability by increasing your war support by plus 25% and you're going to get an increase of stability by 10%. So you keep those bonuses. Now given you're making the you know Democrats more powerful, which eventually you won't want, but I think you'll, you'll keep those bonuses regardless. So it might be wise to grab that real quick before you actually lose your, your democracy. Uh, restoring our home, that one can be done as long as we haven't done this focused here. And then when we get that, it's going to completely remove that penalty that we're currently getting, which I'm not sure how to pronounce that uh, German word there, uh, but that's going to remove quite a few penalties. So it'd be nice to have that. It'd also increase opinion with the, the French and the British while irritating the Germans and the Italians. In fact, it seems like we're not going to pay the Italians back if we go this route. Okay, that's interesting. That has to do with this debt here. Okay, so that'll really piss the Italians off. So we could go that route, but you know what? This actually has some bonuses for us. We're actually getting civilian factories from it, and uh, we're able to construct civilian factories faster. What we're getting from this is some of our resources back, and uh, that 25% that increase to the economy and trade laws will be removed. But we still have that that other penalty there. That is increasing at the four monopolies, so it's still not in our best interest to change these up at the moment with the, the high cost of them. Yeah, you're talking about like 225. I suppose getting rid of the 25% bonus would be helpful. Yeah, you're losing all those other bonuses you're getting. And we can do that any time, as long as we haven't done that one focus. Well, this one here, you're going to be more limited on when you can do that. So I think we're going to grant this, uh, grab this real quick. I, I say real quick, it's a 70-day focus, so it won't be real quick. And then we'll move on. Uh, with the venerate the ancient Hellenes. That'll get us more political power and more stability. We have the 10% stability and, and most importantly that 25% war support. That'd be really useful to have since we have such garbage war support at this moment. That's pretty bad. 27%. Alright, so I'm guessing this is those consequences. And Erhart did uh, survive. Uh, we got our concentrated industry. Uh, so let's go ahead and go after the improved machine tools now. 
And we'll take a look at this event, the Anatolian Fascists Mobilize. So the self-proclaimed fascist movement of Greece, of Greece has reoriented accordingly to our new political reality. Bitter and disgruntled Greek refugees exiled from Turkey are starting to flock to the new radical political movement of, God, I suck at, at Greek names, um, Georgios Kos, uh, Kosomidis, another Greek exiled from his homeland. Uh, Kosomidis is a vocal proponent of the Megali idea. And the reclamation, which the uh, Megali idea is that, uh, you know, basically a restoring of the, the Byzantine Empire, restoring of a, a Greek empire. It's very anti-Turk overall. Uh, but yeah, the uh, he's a very vocal proponent of the Megali idea and the reclamation of historical territories lost to the Republic of Turkey. Although his views are far more radical than any in the Venezuela's administration, some reports suggest that Kosimides Again, I'm not sure how is it Kosimides or Kosimides. I'm not entirely sure, but he aspires for Greece's borders to extend beyond just the Aegean, and that he may have designs on the entirety of Anatolia. However, such reports should be taken with a grain of salt. What sort of madman would make designs over the entirety of the Republic of Turkey? Well, I would. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, so nobody will ever follow that thug, and this is going to decrease stability, and the fascists are going to uh, emerge and start off as hostile. So right now, of course, they're insignificant uh, or inconsequential, whatever they called it there. And so now they're hostile to us. Yeah, we do want to to conquer all of the Republic of Turkey. That'll be one of our goals here, actually, since that's the, the route we're going. Um, so I wanted to take a look and how we're doing here with the, the faction management. So we're now facing two hostile factions, the communists and the fascists, and thus we're, we're getting a penalty to our total stability. Uh, but the monarchists and republicans are, are friendly and loyal here. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Again, I think we go fascists, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the route uh, that you go on this focus tree. Uh, we have a, a very high support for democracy right now, 64% and this is going to increase it even further and unfortunately we are going to have to end the first episode here We got a year and a half and we got through a year and a half So made a good progress for the first video and uh, I do want to take a look At our naval situation. Yeah, we got a submarine we can go and throw in here and let them train up And we should be done training here or pretty close to being done Training those up and we're almost out of fuel as well, but I'm not going to trade for fuel not with our extremely limited civilian factories at the moment we have one access to one civilian factory so that's pretty bad let me just take a look at the resources yeah there's not much we can really do here without causing problems for our production but again we're just extremely limited here uh starting out as greece uh but yeah we're gonna we're gonna get this all sorted out and uh hopefully we'll get to the point where we can we can do some warfare soon maybe not next episode it might be the one after that because, uh, again, we just don't even have the ability to, to declare war at the moment. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the first episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next video, then check out the front page of our channel. We have 3,000-something videos all sorted by genre and quite a few Hoi 4 campaigns. I've uh, been playing Victoria 3 recently. Uh, we did one series as USA. And then the, the last one, which just ended as Japan. Both of them are pretty fun. So if you like VK3, maybe check one of those out. Uh, or maybe CK3, play that as well. Uh, or a non-Paradox game we just recently played, which was Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign. Just did a series with that as well. Uh, so maybe go check out one of those other series. If you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. We found links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. We also found a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And finally, find links to all of our social media if you'd like to follow us on those. So I do hope to see you guys on the next video. And thanks for watching.